Villanova hosts another powerhouse, the unbeaten Kansas Jayhawks, looking for another landmark win. Tomorrow, the Eagles and the Falcons just across the parking lot will have some serious weather to contend with in the NFC Championship game. Mercifully, we're indoors. The crowd may have been thinned a little bit, but it hasn't dampened the enthusiasm of those who did make it here through the weather to the Wachovia Center for unbeaten Kansas and Villanova. Kansas only unbeaten because Nebraska missed what would have been a game-winning three in the final seconds at Allen Fieldhouse on Wednesday night, one of many close calls that the Jayhawks have had already this season. Here inside the Wachovia Center where we do have some Kansas fans in attendance, it sounds like, as we listen to the two team groups competing in their cheers. Hi, everybody. I'm Dan Schulman along with Fran Fischilla. Bill Self says his team's not playing all that, that well right now, but they're finding a way to win. 14-0, they've won a lot of close games already. Well, in their last six games, five of, five of those games have been won by six points or less. That's good news for Coach, but they have not played as well lately. There you see the graphic. Kansas. Getting off to a lot of slow starts and then having to rally and play very well in the second half. You know, some say lucky, some say, hey, to win the close games, you got to be good. We know this Kansas team is good. They beat Villanova by seven points last year at Allen Fieldhouse, and we're going to see two great forwards who met face-to-face -face way up in the air last year at Allen Fieldhouse, our star watch, Wayne Simeon and Curtis Sumner. Well, Wayne Simeon, a National Player of the Year candidate, back after missing four games with a thumb injury. Curtis Sumter, a small forward playing power forward. That'll create a mismatch problem, and these two gentlemen met a year ago. You could call it, I guess, a meeting of the minds, Dan, as Curtis Sumter posterizes the All-American Wayne Simeon. Ow, man. <laughs> Kansas did win the game 86 to 79. Now Sumter and the Wildcats come in here without their starting center. Jason Frazier out with a broken bone in his hand. Villanova, as you look at Simeon, Kansas wearing red uniforms today. Villanova also smarting a little bit. They've lost four very close games, the last two without the injured Frazier. Sumter missed three games with a knee injury, but he's back right now. Villanova had Boston College at BC on Wednesday, up by six, two minutes to go. Couldn't seal the deal, so BC is still undefeated. you got to have a feeling Villanova is going to come out a little bit angry here today. Well, I, I think so. And Villanova, in their four losses this year, it's been a total of 10 points. Yep. Jay Wright, the fourth-year head coach of the Wildcats. Villanova's gone to the NIT each of his three years. Kansas in road red today. And one of the best point guards in the nation, Aaron Miles, number 11, brings him into the front court. Villanova does a nice job of pressuring the ball on the perimeter. Giddens wide open, knocks down his first three. A streaky shooter. If he's pulled, he can shoot you out of the game, but if he's hot, look out. Well, you're right, Dan. Only 25% over the last few games, 7 of 28. And right now, Kansas starting man-to-man. -man. Giddens is on Nardi. They've got Aaron Miles trying to defend Alan Ray, who's Villanova's leading scorer. So a wing guy on a point guard and a point guard on a wing guy. Back the other way. Keep playing. Here's Simeon, despite the injury to his left hand. Sumter, good D, knocking that pass away, but it was intended for Christian Moody. Villanova, Randy Foy. The follow is good by Sumter. Well, this Villanova team not only gets out in transition, their guards are tremendous attacking the basket. Miles cannot turn the corner against Nardi, the sophomore point guard for Villanova. Simeon. Back earlier than expected, Fran, after surgery for that torn ligament in his left thumb, wearing a small, soft cast on his left hand, and he was Big 12 Player of the Week last week. Well, and there's his patented move to turn around, fade away to that left baseline. A 5-2 start for Kansas. They went almost five minutes before they scored a point against Nebraska on Wednesday, so already they're in much better shape. Alan Ray being dogged by Miles. Ray from the elbow. Rebound Giddings. Well, there's a lot of freedom in this Villanova offense with Ray 
and Foy taking you off the dribble. Langford from the corner. And the rebound comes down to Will Sherry, the 6'8 sophomore. He'll have to be big with Jason Frazier out. Nardi turns the corner, but Giddens is called to the foul as we bring you the starting lineups for these two teams. Kansas ran all season long has been searching for another front court player to play alongside Simeon. Christian Moody, a walk-on, has been the best of the bunch. And now that the sprained ankle has improved somewhat, he's back in the starting line. Well, the injury to Simeon really helped Kansas's depth in terms of playing their three young freshmen and Moody quite a bit. Nardi misses the jumper, rebounds Simeon, averaging almost 12 boards per game. Tops for the Big 12. There he is, backing down Sheridan, and turns it over. It's interesting, Dan, Villanova rare, rarely doubles the post. That time Simeon was one-on-one. -on -one. Jay Wright had a great talk with him at Villanova's shoot-around yesterday and talking about some of the, the trials and tribulations that the Villanova team has been through this year, including a serious scare, a terrifying incident on a recent flight. We'll tell you about out of the next commercial break. They're 9-4, and four, but as you mentioned, the four losses by a total of 10 points. This is a team could easily be close to undefeated right now. Nice left-hand scoop there by Alan Ray. Well, there you see what makes them so dangerous. They are relentless at taking the ball to the lane. Miles. And the rebound brought down by the Cats. A three-guard offense for Villanova. Nardi, Foy, and Ray. Ray and Foy are the big scorers. This is Alan Ray. Sixth in the Big East in scoring. Garbage basket there for Will Sheridan in the right place at the right time. Nova leads. Or well, when you have to be concerned with dribble penetration, it forces teams to help, and that allowed Sher Sheridan to get loose inside. And even last year for the game that Kansas won, Villanova dominated on the offensive glass. Ray waiting for help. Now the three. Dan, this is how they play. You really can't scout a team like this. They basically have a take them offense. If you've got an opportunity to take your man off the dribble or go one-on-one, -on -one, that's what the play is. And Bill Self is not a happy man on that Kansas bench right now. A 7-0 run for Villanova here to take a four-point lead over undefeated Kansas. There's that turnaround again by Simeon. He gets the bounce. Well, if you're Will Sheridan, you've got to know that from the scouting reports and the walkthroughs that that's Wayne Simeon's bread and butter. Already walking the ball up the floor for the Wildcats. The crowd still continuing to fill terrain. Again, weather a huge problem right now in the Northeast. Sheridan with a turnaround jumper of his own right in Simeon's mug. Well, Will Sheridan's already got his scoring average. Right. Comes in averaging a little under four. Simeon spins into the paint and knocks it down. So the big guys going right after one another here today. And Dan, the same move three times in a row. Simeon now to that right shoulder. You've got to sit on it and make him turn the other way. Six for Simeon, four for Sheridan. Villanova leading by two. Great start to this game here in Philly. Sumter, he's a matchup nightmare as Moody knocks it out of bounds. It will be Villanova ball when we come back. The Wildcats hot early in their leading score. Alan Ray, a great shooter from outside, shows us early that he might have a big game. Caps by two. Well, the snow here in Philadelphia is an all too recent and serious reminder for the Villanova program about what way they went through just over a week ago. They were playing a game up in Providence, won the game, a great win for them. They get on the plane to go home. They take off in the snow, and within a couple of minutes as the plane is trying to, to get up off the ground above about three or 4,000 feet, it just isn't working. They later found out there was an instrument problem that prevented the plane from... Uh, gaining altitude, prevented the plane from turning properly, and Coach Jay Wright and a couple of his assistants were called forward by the flight attendant who said, listen, we've got a serious problem here. Here's how you work the exits. Here's what you do in the event of a water landing, because they didn't know at the time, but they were 14 miles out over the Atlantic Ocean, and everybody was told to learn how to assume the crash position, and Jay Wright says, 
in all seriousness, he thought it was over for them. He thought there was no chance this plane was going to land safely. After 12 minutes in the air, they gradually banked back towards land, landed at the airport of Providence. They took off at emergency trucks, and everybody was waiting there for them. But it was as terrifying experience as anybody in the Villanova program has ever had in their lives. Well, it put the four close losses in proper perspective. Jay Wright talked about that yesterday, and uh, really fortunate. And Villanova did not make a big deal about the incident. So there hadn't been that much talked about, but certainly puts a tough loss at Boston College on Wednesday night in proper perspective. Langford with a bucket for Kansas. Now Sumter with a three for Villanova to give them a three-point lead. Sumter, in addition to being a great rebounder and inside scorer, is a 39% shooter from beyond the arc. Well, as we said, he's a small forward playing power forward. He had 18 last year at Kansas, so he was a matchup problem a year ago as well. One more thought on the uh, on the Villanova flight incident. Three days later, their next game, they go up to BC just Wednesday, where they lose by one point, and it's snowing again as they're getting ready to take off. And obviously, everybody's a little bit nervous about that. And Jay Wright went up to the pilot and explained to the pilot what they had just been through and said, listen, you've got to talk everybody through this every step of the way. Reassure my players, reassure everybody on the plane that everything's going to be okay. And he said one thing that helped was the Chicago Bulls plane was right next door getting de-iced. The Bulls got on, they took off, and they were fine. And that made all the Villanova players and everybody in the traveling party feel a little bit better. Well, that's another way you use NBA players to motivate your guys. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Kyle Lowry gets it to go. The freshman from right here in Philadelphia, back from knee surgery in September, wasn't even expected to play this season, and he can give them a real spark off the bench. Well, Jay Wright talked about this young man. He paid attention every day in practice. They didn't think he was going to be back until next season. A quick recovery in December. He's back playing, and he will give them added depth on the perimeter and fits nicely into that penetrate and attack style. First foul on Aaron Miles. Alex Galindo is checked into the game now for Kansas number two, along with senior Michael Lee with the ball right now. Simeon loses the handle. And Villanova's got it. And Dan, here's the dilemma. When Wayne Simeon went out, Bill Self was searching for increased depth. They've got the depth, but since he's returned, they have not been in sync right now, particularly at that other forward spot. Nardi trying to go by Giddens. Nice find to Lowry. Tough shot from the baseline. Boy, would you love to be a guard in this offense? What a start for Villanova. Kansas, which time after time this year has fallen behind early and had to make huge rallies in the second half to stay unbeaten. They're 14-0. They actually started pretty well. They were up 5-2 a minute into the game, but Villanova is not backing down at all. And now Kansas may have another problem because Keith Langford has left the game with an apparent injury, clutching his right hand as he goes out, out of the game. Well, this is a guy that got off to a slow start this season because of summer knee surgery. Then the concussion in the Kentucky game. Kansas has had all types of these type of injuries all season, Dan. And I think that's why you really, ha even though they're undefeated, you, you haven't seen them in sync and playing in a lot of those close games. Yep. Bill Self gives his team a lot of credit for their mental toughness, winning games despite injuries, despite deficits. He'd like to see them get a little bit physically tougher, rebound the ball better. Villanova has come out very physical and aggressive and looking like a very confident team right now, Frank. Yeah, and it's a hard way to scout a team because they really don't run any plays. Lee misses the jumper. Will Sheridan playing volleyball with himself brings down the rebound. Alan Ray, another three. And the rebound to Galindo as Michael Lee goes flying. Russell Robinson into the game now replacing Aaron Miles, the freshman out of New York City. Giddens is fouled by Lowry. Boy, Lowry has been in the middle of everything since he came into the game. Well, Kyle Lowry, one of the, the Pennsylvania Player of the Year last year. This area had two great high school point guards, Sean Singletary, who went to Virginia, and Kyle Lowry, who chose to stay home and come play for the Wildcats. Sheridan out, Marcus Austin, a senior from Irvington, New Jersey, number 44, checks in now for Villanova. They'll go about eight deep. Bill Self can go as many as 11 or 12 deep. Galindo misses the three. Simeon, another rebound. Galindo, offensive foul. 
Well, Galindo, a freshman who plays fearlessly, but sometimes finds him himself in trouble by being a little too over-exuberant. That time, attacks the basket, and a nice job of stepping in and taking the charge. You see the inside-out rebound, and then Marcus Austin has position. And sometimes the, the best thing about freshmen is they become That's sophomores. Right. He won't do that hopefully a year from now. Well, he might not do it at all <laughs> after the tongue lashing he just got from Bill Self. Self took him out. Austin is blocked by Sasha Khan, number 24, who's coming to replace Galindo. And Khan, as Kansas turns it over, Khan in a couple of recent games has begun to assert himself. Some nice offensive moves. He's very long, blocks some shots. Look at the turnover trouble for the Jayhawks early. Well, the way Villanova plays in terms of attacking and getting quick shots up, they're not going to turn it over as much. Get inside now for Kansas. Villanova forces more turnovers than any team in the Big East, and they've cut down on their turnovers in the last couple of years. Curtis Sumter, bad knee and all, off to a great start with seven early points. And there's the matchup problem for Kansas as Simeon had to go out on the floor to guard Sumter. Robinson slips, falls, turns it over. Seven turnover committed by Kansas. An outstanding start for the Villanova Wildcats against the unbeaten Jayhawks. Up nine here in the first half. Villanova an extra point during the timeout. That's how that's how things are going for them today. The uh, officials evaluated this shot by Sumter a couple of minutes ago and ruled that both feet were behind the line. So it's been changed from a two to a three. It's now a 10-0 run for Villanova, a 10-point lead for Villanova as they try to knock off one of the last remaining unbeatens in the country. Kansas 14-0, a number of early deficits, late runs, and close wins. Illinois got that monster game against Wisconsin up in Madison Tuesday night, 9 Eastern on ESPN. Duke tonight at 6 o'clock down at Florida State. Tallahassee, a tough place to win. And Boston College going into New York to play St. John's at alumni tonight. Well, and this is a trap game for Kansas. This game was not supposed to be scheduled in January because of some scheduling TV snafus. Bill Self has to play this game in the middle of the conference, and it's the middle of five out of six on the road, and Villanova has come ready to play. Sasha Khan with another block, his second. Bill Self will rotate players in and out at that other front court position opposite Simeon like crazy. It could be Galindo or C.J. Giles or Christian Moody or Darnell Jackson. He's got five guys who can share minutes at that spot. And Dan, that's a good news, bad news situation because I don't think they've really been in sync over the last three weeks yeah. because he has more options now. Langford, by the way, back into the game, so that right hand evidently is okay. Miles from the wing. Does go down for him, but Miles, a vastly improved shooter this year, even with that miss, he's 14 for 28 from three-point range. Well, a career 30% shooter, and he has really been outstanding. One of the reasons, Dan, I think he's shooting the ball better, he doesn't have to be on the court as much right. this year because of the emergence of the freshman Russell Robinson, playing three mess, me, less minutes a game than he did as a junior. Down from 34 to 31. Second year under Bill Self, so the team much more fully adjusted to his methods of coaching as Sasha Khan spins and scores. Born in Siberia, went to high school in Florida, now spends his school year in Lawrence, and he's getting better and better by the game. Well, the other thing, weather's not going to be a factor no. today with him if you're from <laughs> Siberia. That's right. <laughs> the hands of Ray out of bounds. And this is the first real hiccup here, the last couple of trips for Villanova. Well, with the increased minutes to Sasha Khan is the increased confidence his teammates have, have, have in him. And you see the nice dish by Wayne Simeon. Khan, 6'11", 235 pounds. And again, recently, had some very good moments against Kentucky and a huge win at Kentucky for Kansas without Simeon. He was still out with the injury. Giddens, his second three of the game. Don't let him get heated up. Well, he has a picture-perfect stroke. When you get him in rhythm, he can really knock down shots. Sometimes he forces shots, but when you get him a wide-open look, pretty jump shot. A quick 5-0 spurt for Kansas, and Jay Wright takes a timeout for Villanova as the Cats' lead has been cut down to five at 21-16.
Well, tonight, 9 Eastern, right here on ESPN, is college basketball Saturday, one of the best rivalries of the Big East, number 17, Pittsburgh, although the Panthers are struggling some this season, taking on Charlie Villanueva and UConn. UConn, that front court. Villanueva, Boone, and Rudy Gay, they're getting better and better by the game. Don't forget that coverage begins at 8 Eastern. College game day fueled by Mountain Dew on site at Campbell in Stores, Connecticut. Kansas will be a part of the Saturday night games next week. They're going to be on that game. Giddens, as you can see, relies almost exclusively on the three-pointer. Rarely gets to the line, rarely rebounds. He's a jump shooter. And the hard part about that is when your shot doesn't go down, you're not getting, getting any easy baskets from the three-throw line. Part of the reason is he's not a great ball handler, doesn't like to attack the rim. Sumter drives and draws the foul. Well, that's one thing Curtis Sumter does like to do is attack the rim. Gives you a lot of different looks because he can score inside, but he's also really effective away from the basket. Simeon the foul his first. Sumter is in the top ten of the Big East in scoring and rebounding. Was third team all Big East last year. But I don't know how many people outside of the Big East or maybe even the immediate Philly area know how good a player this guy is. Well, he started as a freshman, played 26 minutes a game. There's a guy that played for Kelvin Sampson on the U.S. under-20 gold medal team last summer with the likes of Sean May, Chris Paul, Curtis Withers of, U of uh, Charlotte. Won, won the gold down there. Up in Halifax. Yep. And reading the, the stories about that team, one of the reasons Calvin Sampson wanted Sumter on the team, he needed some guys who would accept being a 9 10 man on the team and be good team players, and Curtis Sumter fit the ball. Well, and you know why that team was good if he's the 9th or 10th yeah. man. Kansas will retain possession, much to the displeasure of the largely pro Villanova crowd. There are some Kansas fans both on our side of the floor and behind the Jayhawk bench. The Kansas fan won this national program. Too easy. Simeon on the inbounds. And the assist to Aaron Miles, who could become just the fourth player in NCAA history to wind up with a thousand assists in his career. Well, he's had a brilliant career with in the year of the point guard nationally. You don't hear as much about him. And that's a problem for Wayne Simeon. He is not used to guarding a small forward that far away from the basket. Sumter's third three, Fran. 13 points already for Curtis Sumter. Sheridan back into the game, and it picks up where he left off with the rebound. Lowry looking to drive. Got pummeled after he let the ball go. No foul call. Villanova retains possession. Boy, I love the way he attacked the basket. I talked to Curtis Townsend, the assistant coach of Kansas, before the game, Dan. He said that the Jayhawks may have to play a little zone today if they can't contain penetration, and thus far they've not been able to do that. Well, J.R. Giddens could not contain the penetration, so he goes to the bench and rarely used Jeff Hawkins. Comes into the game and now for Kansas. Again, Bill Self will use everybody at his disposal. He's got a lot of bodies over there. And there's the zone. And right now, Villanova is going to take a little bit of time to contemplate how they're going to attack this. But you made a great point. They're just getting by Kansas and getting to the rim. Now from outside, Randy Foley knocks it down. An 11-point lead for Villanova. And many of the students here in the end zone behind the basket are on their feet as the Wildcats now have their biggest lead of the game against one of the last remaining unbeatens in Division I play. Well, when you really analyze Villanova, you look at those four losses by only 10 points. And with the injuries, they have played very good basketball this year and just have been unlucky. Frankfurt is fouled. Villanova lost to Temple by one in a big five game. Lost at Notre Dame by six. Sumter didn't play that game. And Chris Thomas hit an unbelievable three from the corner in the last minute of play. Lost to a rapidly improving Georgetown team by two without Jason Frazier. And lost to unbeaten Boston College at BC by one without Jason Frazier in a game that Villanova ran led by six with two minutes to go. Missed some free throws, turned it over, and lost the game in the last second. Well, and as a coach, the thing you've got to do is you've got to maintain an even keel with your team, even through the face of some of that adversity. And we saw yesterday, Dan, a very positive, upbeat Villanova yeah. practice. And certainly it starts from the top with the coach. 
Jay Wright. And for Jay Wright, this big-time recruiting class, these guys are juniors now. They haven't been to the NCAA tournament, and now's the time, now's the year, you would figure, for them to make their mark. It won't be easy in a league as competitive as the Big East with all the good teams there, but this could be a real signature win for this program. Well, Jay Wright talked about the fact that these guys as freshmen, they all expected to come in and dominate the Big East, and you know it doesn't work that way, but they have, they have worked through this, and they continue to get better. Sumter travel. Simeon still having to defend Sumter, who's got 13 points already in this game. That time he tried to take him off the dribble. So it's Miles and Hawkins in the backcourt. Langford on the wing. Kahn and Simeon up front for Kansas. Langford, and that shot was partially blocked. Langford said he got hit on the wrist. And good hustle brings the ball back to Villanova. Langford wanted a foul call on that play. Well, the judge, Jim Burr, was right next to us. He said, nope. And now Langford's going to hear the chant of air ball from the, the Philly crowd here. They'll get on you here in Philly, right? Uh, <laughs> they, get on, they get on Santa Claus. They get on the I guess they'll get on the, the Jayhawks. Although I've never seen anybody have as much success talking to Philadelphia people and getting what he needs as Fran Fischilla does. It is an amazing ability. <laughs> well, Simeon and Sumter, our star watch, both scoring early. Wayne Simeon with that patented turnaround jumper and on the inbounds play, get an easy two on the dunk. But Fran, Curtis Sumter has really made a huge statement so far here in this game. Well, he had 18 last year at Allen Fieldhouse. He's off to the same start today. In fact, outside, but not inside here today. We got a good game going, and this junior class of Villanova, Fran, is really playing well so far here. Well, today. it has. Jay Wright came from Hofstra in New York. We had a great deal of success. Very popular in New York and New Jersey. He took advantage of uh, Seton Hall, Rutgers, and St. John's being down a little bit a few years ago, and this is the culmination of that class. They have not been to the NCAA tournament yet. They've had some bad luck, but they're playing very, very well today. Jason Frazier's been injured all three years that he's been at Villanova. People might remember the phone card scandal they had last year, which cost them a ton of suspensions early in the season. They actually had to rally and win two games of the Big East Tournament last year just to get eligible for the postseason NIT, and they did it. They beat a couple of pretty good teams. There is talent on this team. They just haven't been able to put it all together. Lost a lot of close games over the years. Will Sheridan, by the way, for Villanova, is now wearing number 35. Had some blood on his uniform, so he's got a new number right now. I've been impressed so far with Villanova's aggressiveness on the defensive end. Right there. They surround Langford, who gets it back, puts it up again, and misses badly. And now after the shot, we've got a whistle and a call going against the Wildcats. And I believe it'll be Sheridan wearing that new number. Just picks up his first foul. Well, Jay Wright wouldn't mind if he wore 35 and then 50. He might be able to get 10 fouls right. out of it. <laughs> <laughs> so Kansas to inbound. Villanova's got some very good defensive numbers on the year, allowing opponents just 59 points per game. And now Langford gets trapped and has to call a timeout. And Bill Self's upset. Things are just not going well for the Jayhawks. Well, and the beauty of trapping that screen and roll right there and forcing Kansas into the timeout is now as a player, as a coach, you have to decide whether you want to run any more screen and roll because of the way Villanova handled it so beautifully. Hey, this weekend, don't miss the season of premiere of the PGA Tour on ABC Sports, where I'm sure the weather is much better than it is here in the Northeast. Tiger's there, BJ's there, Ernie Els is there. And both Tiger and Ernie Els are in contention right now at the Buick Invitational this afternoon, free Eastern on ABC. Tom Lehman is your leader, but Tiger is in the hunt. Four strokes back through a couple of rounds. I'd like to see how good those guys would be uh, on a golf course in Philly in January. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> how can they get the nice weather? <laughs> Well, Jay Wright doesn't care what the weather's like as long as his team is playing well. He, you know, as you mentioned, in talking to him last night at the shoot-around, he's got a pretty good feeling about this bunch right now. There's the weather outside as the snow continues to fall. Talk of up to a foot of snow from Philly up through New York and up into New England. Remember the big Pittsburgh-UConn game tonight on ESPN at 9 Eastern. The weather will be a factor there. Well, you can tell when you read the news clips of Villanova, the way the players talk about their coach, they really, really admire him and love playing for him. And they've just handled this adversity very well, but it's got to translate into wins and tournament appearances. 
Jeff Hawkins gets some big minutes for Kansas here in the first half, and Sasha Khan is going to continue to earn minutes the way that he is coming around. And Dan, I watched him in practice in October, and he's so much a better player now than he was early in the year. You can just see the confidence grow. And in some ways, he'll be able to, to do for Kansas what David Padgett did a year yep. ago before transferring to Louisville. The guy who's losing minutes right now is Giddens with Hawkins in there. And Giddens has hit a couple of threes, but he got taken out for lapses at the defensive end. Ray, nowhere to go, so he turns and fires. When in doubt, put it up. Well, Aaron Miles did a good job of cutting off all the passing angles. He just forgot that Alan Ray still had the basketball. Seven now for Ray, who averages 16 and a half, sixth in the Big East. There's Jim Moody will check back into the next opportunity. Great help side defense by Villanova. Simeon inside is fouled. Well, Aaron Miles did a nice job of making Alan Ray pick up the dribble. You see how active his hands are, but he anticipates a little bit, and Ray's able to sneak under that arm. Well, they've got guys who can hurt you from outside, who can hurt you off the dribble, and they've got guys who get to the offensive glass as well. A Villanova team that can score in a variety of ways. Ray Simeon at the line, and although he's a pretty good free throw shooter, Kansas as a team is not. Just 64% on the season as a group. And that kind of thing catches up to you after a while. Well, and it's interesting that they've won all those close games yeah. and still shot so poor. Although you could look at it the other way and say that's why they were in close that's games. That's right. When you miss free throws, it's like a turnover. We showed it to you in the graphic at the top of the show. Seven of their 14 wins by seven points or less. They trailed Georgia Tech 18 to four and one. They didn't score for four minutes and 49 seconds at the beginning of the game against Nebraska and won. There's a foul. More great offensive rebounding. Chris Charles with the left hand. Well, Chris Charles getting an opportunity to play because of the injury to Jason Frazier. Hawkins thought about it. Langford wants to clear out, wants to take Foy. Foy got a finger on that shot. Not underneath, has it rejected. Villanova basketball. Well, Kansas has come in here to Philadelphia today a half step behind, and Villanova has taken advantage of that. You know, and even Wednesday against Nebraska, Bill Self said, and I quote, he had to beg his players to play with energy and enthusiasm. Is he going through the same kind of thing here today? Well, he, he is, and, and it's also mental, Dan, because they're out of conference. They've traveled halfway across the country. It's a snowy day here. All those things add up and mentally wear on you if you don't come ready to play. Giddens in, Hawkins out. Villanova's had a fairly comfortable 10, 11 point lead for about the last seven or eight minutes. This ties the biggest lead they've had here today. Lankford knocks down the mid-range jumper. Well, Lankford looked like he was able to extend that arm a little bit and create some space to get that shot up because he's been smothered thus far today. Lankford with five. In some of their close wins, he's had a very quiet first half. Very superstitious guy. He'll change his shoes at halftime. And then he goes off in the second half, and he had the biggest basket of the win over Georgia Tech on New Year's Day. Well, he had, I think, 16 of his 18 in the second That's right. half. Moody with a block. Langford, a nice look for Giddens. Steps in, knocks it down. A two-pointer for J.R. Giddens. Here comes Kansas. Well, and that's a good move by J.R. Giddens. That shot fake lifted the defender and was able to get some space to get the shot off. He's got so much athletic ability. There's so much more that he's able to do if he puts the ball on the floor sometimes. Sumter, he's been feeling it all day. This is this three, and it'll be Chris Charles over the back. Talent Kansas has second in the country unbeaten. It's a walk-on who's a starter, Christian Moody, who gets this play started with a block shot. Well, Christian Moody grew seven inches in high school. You know, he would have been a really good mid-major player. It's not like he's a stiff. He's yeah. a guy that yeah. came here because he went to the same high school as Roy Williams. And I think if you had a chance, Dan, to play in the Southern Conference or to be a player <laughs> on Kansas's bench, yep. probably want to be at Kansas. Five second call. Jayhawks turn it over. We've got another fresh base in there for Kansas. 
freshman Darnell Jackson, 6'8", 240, out of Oklahoma City. I believe, just kind of a rough count here, I believe Bill Self has used 12 different players already in the first half. Well, 11 played nine minutes or more than, as you mentioned, Jeff Hawkins, who played a lot last year, got a chance to break a sweat today. Now away from the ball, we've got a hold against Moody, I believe. And that'll be his first. Under four minutes to play. Villanova leading Kansas by seven. Bill Self and the Jayhawks on feet, but in a tough one here in Philly. Senator Madison will come up, and I can't wait to be there Tuesday night. Illinois, unbeaten number one of the nation in Madison on Tuesday night to take on the Badgers. You talk about trap games, and you don't think that Bo Ryan would let his team, obviously, would let his right. team look past Michigan with Illinois. But it's, it's tough for players, for 18, 19-year-olds, not right. to see what's coming up. Absolutely, and uh, you know what? Your opponents know that, too. Yeah. And of course, you know anytime you go on the road in any of these leagues, it's uh, very, very difficult. Yes. You will have a good one Tuesday night. And you'll have a great one on Monday night. Oklahoma State at Oklahoma. Big Monday night Eastern. Sumter inside. And Villanova turns it over. Jackson comes up with a loose ball for the Jayhawks. Well, Sumter much better when he gets space to use that quickness by Moody. That time Moody stayed in front of him. City in the high score for Kansas today. has been on the bench for a while now. Moody sets a screen. Langford goes the other way. Miles spinning on Nardi. Some of the fans thought he traveled. Lob inside. Moody, yes. And the lead is down to five. Great look by Aaron Miles on that trap out top. The Villanova defender was starting to rotate out. Miles dropping the dime inside to Moody. And Miles already the Big 12 and Kansas's all-time leader in assists. Nardi the fadeaway. Well, he's been quiet, but... He can get it going. The first two points of the day for Nardi, the sophomore out of Linden, New Jersey. And now Curtis Shaw's got a hold on Villanova. Aaron Miles recognized that the Villanova defense is about to rotate out. And you see Sumter leave early to get to Jackson. And then Mike Nardi with a little bit of street ball right here. Wyatt with, with Foy and Ray so effective during the year, but he's also a point guard that can score. Brad, that last foul was on Curtis Sumter, his second. He goes out and probably will stay out for the last two and a half minutes of the first half. He was in big foul trouble Wednesday at BC, only played 17 minutes. They need Sumter on the floor, especially with Jason Frazier out with a broken hand. And with this seven-point lead, Villanova's going to slow it down some to play without Sumter and not let the game get out of control. Or launch a three from the wing. <laughs> Whatever works, Kyle Lowry. Boy, the freshman's been impressive today. Well, one of the best prep point guards in the country last year. He just took a shot to the right side of the face. Took an inadvertent shot from Aaron Miles. Get in steps in again. Miles, oh, Jackson thought Miles was going up for a shot. And that will happen because Jackson is not used to being on the court all that often with Aaron Miles. Miles thinking pass first, and Jackson thinking that Miles was going to shoot the shot. Miles out. Hawkins back in right now for Kansas. The Jayhawks had it down to five. All of a sudden, it's back up to ten as turnovers continue to plague the Jayhawks. Simeon has returned right now for Kansas for the last minute and a half. Doesn't have foul trouble. Only has one. Four. Boy, that was a tough drive. Oh, offensive foul, Austin. See, and if you're Marcus Austin right now with a ten-point lead, you don't need to be playing one-on-one -on -one right now in the post. You see that left arm, and that's an obvious call. But Marcus Austin should have got it back out to the strength of this Villanova offense, got it back out to the perimeter, and let them play with the ball. Well, let's see if Kansas can make a little noise here in the last minute 20 of the first half. Get this lead down a little bit. Get it wants to fire. Moody lost the handle and a held ball. It'll stay with the Jayhawks. 
Coming up a minute, nine seconds from now, it's the UPS Halftime Report with Scott Reese and Rick Majerus. Lou Hempson has reportedly called it a career. Rick Majerus will talk a little bit about some of the best home court advantages and game day with the gang in stores getting ready for tonight's big game, 9 Eastern here on ESPN, Pittsburgh and Connecticut. Jump hook, Wayne Simeon. 11 now for Simeon. Well, Bill, uh, Kansas has been in quicksand this whole first half. Bill Self would like to just get this lead down to six or eight and hope for another one of those second half runs. And Curtis Shaw with a foul call away from the ball going against Villanova. And an intentional foul is the call. Boy, is that costly. On Kyle Lowry. Villanova has the ball, and then Lowry gets called for an intentional. So Kansas will get two free throws in the ball. Well, that's a freshman mistake. You have an eight-point lead with the ball. Now, Curtis Shaw, the official who has made the calls, come over to the scores table as Kyle Lowry tries to explain to his coach what led to that. Well, he's gesturing to, to Mike Nardi that... Uh, Someone was pushing him, but you got to keep your composure. And it was Jeff Hawkins who uh, got tangled with Lowry. See, they're jabbing at each other a little bit. So they may be reviewing to see if it was a punch. I don't know. That's yeah, one they thing can they can do look that. at because. If if it's a punch, then he's going to get ejected That's from right. the game. But they, they cannot review this. They can look at it as a punch, but they if there's no punch there, they can call an intentional foul. That is not a reviewable call. If he right. called it an intentional, so right. I, I have, imagine the discussion here is, is it intentional right. or is it a flagrant of a game ejection? That's right, because it's already, an in, it's already Dan, an intentional foul. Right. They've made that call. Yeah. If they could determine there was a punch, then they can use that monitor to adjudicate that. Well, that look that you just saw is the same look that Curtis Shaw and Jim Burr are looking at right now. And you could see kind of his left arm go back a little bit. Now we'll try to get a look at another angle. There's a punch. It sure looks like one. I mean, he did, it wasn't a big windup, but it right. looks like right. there now, was a small it, punch throw. You know, you can you know you can parse now what a punch might be. Right. Because if it's a quick jab, it's just like an elbow to me. It's not like hauling off and hitting someone with a haymaker. And that's Curtis Shaw, who is looking over at the scores table. He is the official who saw it live. He is the official who made the call, and now he's brought in Jim Burr for consultation. So they take another look at number 13 in white. Yep. That's more of a punch I, there yeah. than, uh, than I originally thought. Yeah, that, that would be... That would be my opinion as well. We saw that happen in the Texas game last yep. week where Jason Klotz threw a punch. It was not detected. No foul was called. And then Texas eventually suspended Klotz for a game for their next game. And now Jim Burr is going to talk to Jay Wright and we'll find out if Kyle Lowry is going to get tossed out of this game. But either way, a, a real potential momentum shifter here. That's right. Villanova's walking the ball up the floor. Now they pick up a foul, and Kansas gets two shots, and Kansas gets right. the ball. And it's potentially seven points, really. And that's really, you know, as a freshman, you have to understand you're going to be baited into those situations. And with the lead at home in such an important game, you've got to know better. And you've got to maintain your composure. Uh, Jay Wright is asking for some clarification. Jim Burr, the lead official in this game. And you can see the way that Burr is motioning about what Lowry did. Lowry is still standing in the team huddle just to Jay Wright's right, waiting to find out his fate. And Jim Burr is motioning to Bill Self in a punching motion. Yeah. Now, you'd think at this point, everybody would be on the same page and a decision would have been made, but Curtis Shaw has gone back to the scores table and that's going to be all for Lowry. So, yep. Lowry ejected for throwing a punch. And, and given the replay, you know, I think they came up with the right decision. And the bad news for Villanova is that he will miss the next game for throwing this punch. 
And this just compounds the problems that Villanova has had with the injuries to Sumter and Frazier. And that next game won't be easy. Right back here with the Wachovia Center. They play three games a year downtown. They're playing Notre Dame Wednesday night here in this building. Now Curtis Shaw is going to come over. Fran has taken off his headset for a moment to get an explanation from Curtis Shaw. So Kyle Lowry has been ejected from the game. Jeff Hawkins is at the line, just knocked down the first free throw. What did well, Curtis say? Curtis Shaw said they adjudicated it as a flagrant personal throwing a punch. They called it as a fight, Dan, yeah. which means he will be ejected in the next game. Okay, we have now blown up a look at it that you can see, and uh, that's a punch. I mean, yeah. it's, it's hard to call that anything and, else but a punch. And, it, and unfortunately for Villanova, it's really silly that he had to do that. So they lost some of their depth. They've lost a guy who was playing very, very well here today. Lowry had been a big impact performer in this game. It cost them a possession. Kansas just got a point at the line as Hawkins made one of two. And now the Jayhawks have the ball back again. And if they shoot it quick, they're going to get it back again. Yep. Giddens with a three. So essentially, Kansas on this possession went two for one. Nope. Villanova will have the last yeah. possession now. 38-34. Last time Nardi brought the ball up the floor, it was 38-30. So you can make a case that that cost them four points. Well, Villanova doesn't like to hold the ball. I've seen them shoot it quick here, and that'll give Kansas another possession. Yeah, Ray the miss. Loose ball. Villanova the rebound. Nardi a clean look. Big shot for the Wildcats. Big momentum builder. Hawkins from about 70 feet away off the backboard, and Nardi helps bring some of that momentum ran back to Villanova's side at the end of the half. Well, they had the 10-point lead. It slipped to four, and then Michael Nardi off an offensive rebound and a good decision by Marcus Austin to kick it out. Nardi with a clean look. An eventful, tough first half, including an ejection of Villanova trying to upset an unbeaten here in Philly today. UPS Halftime Report, here's Scott Reese. Hi, Dan, thank you so much. For the Sumter 13 to lead Villanova. Nice first half for the Cats, up seven at the break. It is the UPS Halftime Report. I'm Scott Reese, good to have you along. We begin with news from the National Bank. First half, a tough first half. Villanova played very well, shot the ball very well. They've got a chance to pull off an upset here today. They did. They, they came out and they really got the first punch in. Uh, Jayhawks have been sluggish, traveling halfway across the country. Wayne Simeon, however, has kept Kansas in this game. Turnaround jump shot, 11 points. He and J.R. Giddens with 11 apiece. That's kept Kansas close. But Villanova with terrific guard play, they can tack the basket. And when you can attack the basket, it also opens up the three-point line. They've taken advantage of that. And a big play at the end of the first half, Kyle Lowry, you saw the punch there with the left hand, and this will hurt Villanova. He played 11 minutes, seven points. The good news, Dan, for Villanova is Ray, Nardi, and Foy have no fouls each. And they better get used to playing a lot of minutes. There is really no other backcourt substitute who could come in off the bench or who normally plays for the Wildcats. So if they're going to make any kind of a substitution, it would have to be a big guy coming in and Sumter sliding to the small forward position. Remember, this is a Villanova team that's dealt with injuries, that terrifying flight out of Providence. They've lost four very close games, some of them in the final seconds. Now they've got a player rejected for throwing a punch. Sumter is fouled. And Moody and Giddens were both there. And Steve Welmer is going to give the foul, I believe, to Christian Moody. Let's check out the first half stats. These are two teams, Fran, who came in holding the opposition and down in the 30s in field goal percentage, but both teams shot the ball well the first half. Now both teams got off to a very aggressive start. Villanova maintained that offensive aggressiveness and really knocked down some long-range shots. The foul actually on Giddens, his second. Sumter knocks down the free throw. It was the free throw line that really hurt Villanova against BC, although generally they're a good free throw shooting team. Nine and four are the Wildcats, two and three in elite play. This is obviously a non elite game between Kansas and Villanova, but another tough game coming up Wednesday here for the Cats against Notre Dame. Well, and Nova did not break out that three quarter court, one, two, two in the first half. I really like that decision. The thing I was going to mention to you, Dan, this next four minutes will be crucial for both teams. That press may be able to get Villanova running again and keep them on the aggressive attack offensively. Sutter from the wing, another three for Curtis Sutter, and a timeout, Kansas. <laughs> 
Well, the first four minutes of the second half really is where most games can be decided. 18 points for Curtis Sumter. His fourth three of the game. Kansas cannot match up with Sumter today. Happens now the biggest lead of the game for the Wildcats. Kansas, one of the last four unbeatens in college basketball, but on the ropes potentially here today. Still better than 19 minutes to go. Duke unbeaten at Florida State tonight, 6 Eastern, right here on ESPN. The Jayhawks have trailed at half four times this year, obviously have come back to win them all, have won a number of games late, but they keep winning games by one point, two points, and at some point, your luck runs out. Giddens misses the three, Simeon on the glass. What do the Jayhawks have to do to get back into this game? Well, it's still early, but as I mentioned earlier, the first four minutes of the second half for both teams is crucial. Villanova got the crowd back into it. Kansas now has to be methodical defensively, make sure they know where Foy and Ray are at all times. There's Ray, left it short. Villanova, incredibly hot shooting from beyond the arc so far in this game. That was a two-point attempt, so they're eight for 11 from beyond the arc. Sumter's got four of them. Simeon off his hands, and maybe that's a case where he can't squeeze it with that left hand. Remember the surgery on his thumb and playing with a soft pass. Well, Bill Self has said he's playing with a hand and a half yep. since he's come back and played with that cast. And that pass came in there with a lot of zip on it. Sumter now being defended by Booty. Can anybody stop Sumter? Everybody gets a touch. Sheridan the turnaround, rebound Giddens. Well, Sumter had to anticipate that the miss was going to come off his side and he just moved to the wrong spot. Another turnover committed by the Jayhawks. Villanova a little bit quicker to the basketball. And Bill Self again looking down that bench, hollering. Jeff Hawkins is going to come back into this game here early in the second half. Randy Ford. This is the three. It'll be Kansas ball. Well, the dangerous thing for Villanova is when you play with this freedom, sometimes you can get hot, sometimes you can get cold. This is a rare time that Aaron Miles gets out of control. I don't like point guards that spin in the lane. Usually two feet. When you're, when you're a point guard that spins, it's like driving a Ferrari in city traffic. Only <laughs> bad things can yeah. happen. So Hawkins in for Miles. Langford playing with that injured right hand. Now has a shot block. Four. Villanova in transition. 30 lays it in. Well, we called him the professor last year from street ball. And he's been quiet. He's allowed the game to come to him. Moody. Hawkins will take a three. Rebound, Sumter. A foul on Moody of Kansas. Second on Moody. Well, Dan, you, you made the point at halftime that Michael Nordy's three at the end of the half as he finishes on the break was huge because it gave Villanova a seven-point lead. They came out of the box quick, and they've reignited this crowd, which is really important. After Kyle Lowry was ejected for throwing a punch near the end of the first half, Kansas made one free throw, hit a three. It was 38-34. Nardi's three made it 41-34 at the break, and now Villanova's outscored him 7-2 here to start the second half. It'll remain for the Wildcats, 10 on the shot clock. Well, the one concern you have if you're Kansas is being able to contain the dribble. Because Villanova attacks the basket so well, it also opens up the three-point shot for them. Boy, loves to drive. Being hounded by Langford. Shot clock at two. A travel on Allen Ray. Kansas ball. Well, Allen Ray looked up. He saw that shot clock winding down and shuffled his feet before he could get a good look. Boy, if you're Jay Wright and your team has lost so many close games, still 9-4, and four, but all four losses close games, you've had injuries, now you've had a player rejected for throwing the punch, you've had a lot of adversity this year, these next 16 minutes are going to seem like an eternity. This is a program in need of a signature win. Steal by Nardi. Going right at Hawkins, lays it up and out. <laughs> Biggest lead of the game for the Cats. Well, he's a point guard that can score. Good old 
old-fashioned schoolyard basketball. Giddens throws it away. Kansas in disarray right now. And they're on their feet here at the Wachovia Center. Those who have braved the elements, the storm outside, are getting rewarded for it because they are seeing a tremendous performance by Villanova this afternoon. Alan Ray. Well, we talked about the penetration setting up the jumper. A perfect example right there. What a backcourt performance by the Wildcats today. Well, we talked about it's a take them offense. Whoever has the ball, if you're one of Villanova's guards, you just take your man. Keep your eye on Alan Ray. Sets up the jumper because he has the ability to attack the basket, get in the lane. Grand Villanova is 9 for 13 from three-point range today, and they've outscored Kansas 12 to 2 this half, so that's a 15 to 2 run going back to Nardi's three right at the end of the first half. And Dan, you know if you push up on the three-point shot, they're just going to drive by yep. you and get into the lane. They're a tough matchup. And think of all the teams in this league that they're going to have to compete with for an NCAA tournament berth. Connecticut is great. Syracuse is great. Pittsburgh will be just fine. Notre Dame is solid. Boston College is unbeaten right now and ranked ninth in the country. Georgetown is vastly improved. Well, I'm, I'm glad you didn't mention those five teams coming into the league next year. <laughs> That's right. Louisville, Cincinnati, DePaul, Marquette, and South Florida. Now, apparently they've gone and reviewed that last shot by Ray during the, uh, the timeout, so it's gone back to being a two-pointer. So it's 52 36 Villanova still the largest lead of the game Michael Lee Sasha Khan in right now for Kansas Miles and Giddens are on the bench little matchup zone right now by Villanova Simeon has it blocked I think it was Sheridan Sheridan's done some nice things today now Villanova has to maintain their aggressiveness without getting into a situation where they take tough shots Ray tough shot rips out and the rebound is Simeon. Like you said, they're a team that likes to play fast regardless of the situation. Langford lost the handle. All the loose balls go to the Wildcats. Boy, for two more. I'll tell you, not only was that a great pass from Allen Ray, but Thor looked like Terrell Owens catching the ball over his shoulder, didn't need to dribble it, kissed it off the glass. That's not easy. Sasha Khan inside. Rebound Villanova. There are no answers right now for Bill Self in Kansas. Everything that can go wrong is going wrong today for the Jayhawks. Sumter inside and a foul. And now Bill Self is going to go even deeper into his bench. Well, Nick Vaughn, a walk-on out of Lincoln, Nebraska, will be coming in. He's tried just about everybody else. Nothing is working for the unbeaten, but in trouble Jayhawks today. What a day for college basketball. It looks like we may not get out of here tonight because of the weather, so we're going to be watching a lot of ESPN basketball the rest of the day, including number four Duke at Florida State. 6 o'clock Eastern tonight on ESPN. And then, of course, Connecticut-Pittsburgh, 9 o'clock tonight. Kansas ranked second. One of four remaining unbeatens. But they are down 18 points right now, in spite of the fact that Kyle Lowry was ejected from the game for throwing a punch in the first half. The fans want his freedom back. But, boy, they have come out and played some. Yeah, they're hitting shots, and that, that's important. But they have played some inspired basketball from the moment this game began. Well, we noticed it yesterday at the practice because you had a team coming off a heartbreaking loss to undefeated Boston College, and they practiced like a team that was undefeated. Yep. Kansas in this half ran two points, six turnovers. Nick Boz, we mentioned, a walk-on, a recruited walk-on, a Sumter Fowles Khan, is now in the game. I think we can say with a fair amount of certainty that this particular group has not been on the floor as a unit for Kansas this year. The backcourt is Baugh, 
Hawkins and Lee. No Miles, no Langford, no Gibbons. I think this is a statement from Bill Self. You talked about the fact that after the game against Nebraska, the close win on Wednesday night, he was very unhappy with the effort yeah. of his team. Might become the kind of situation where a coach says, I'm going to play the guys who want it the most, regardless of ability or scholarships or anything like that. Curtis Shaw with a foul call. Now, there's a lot of wins. Up his third. I'm sorry, Brent. Excuse me, Dan. There's a lot of wins sitting there right on that Kansas bench right now. And, you know, you don't want to think about this as a coach, but if you're going to lose a game, probably better to lose a midseason non-conference yep. game instead of losing one at home against Nebraska. Kansas 14 and 0. Although a number of them close with some of them against so-called lesser opposition, even on their own home court at Allen Fieldhouse. It's not like they've been blowing people out. Michael Lee, a senior, the fourth member of that senior class, knocks down to three. Well, here's what this does also. Remember, Villanova does not have a deep bench. If Kansas can cut this lead, get it near 10, I guarantee you those three starters will come back with fire in their eyes. Sheridan's got three fouls for Villanova. Austin inside. Khan knocks it away. Sumter's gone out with three fouls for Villanova. Lee slips and turns it over. Oh, and that was a big break for Villanova. Michael Lee attacking the basket. Trying to get Villanova closer. We are on a... This is a converted hockey. Was a, well, of course, there's no ice underneath. This is no ice. There's no hockey being played. But normally, you'll see that in a venue yep. where there's hockey being played. 16 turnover committed by Kansas. Seven of them in the first seven minutes here in the second half. Randy for the pull. And Sasha Khan again earning some minutes. Rebounding, scoring, blocking shots for the Jayhawks. Simeon. Again to the right shoulder, this time left it short, and the opportunistic Sheridan there for another rebound. Well, Marcus Austin did a nice job of closing off the lane. And now Sheridan is fouled by Wayne Simeon. Well, we've got a big development going on here in the Wachovia Center in Philadelphia as the Villanova Wildcats try to knock off one of the four remaining unbeatens in college basketball. Along with Fran Priscilla, I'm Dan Schulman. We're in the midst of this big snowstorm in the Northeast, but we've got a pretty good crowd in attendance here in Philly, and they're loving every minute of this. Villanova has played extraordinarily well all day, especially here to start the second half. It was a four-point lead in the last minute of the first half. Kyle Lowry, a freshman guard, had just gotten ejected for Villanova for throwing the punch. Nardi hit a three at the end of the first half, and the Wildcats have been on fire here in the second half. Ray has it blocked by Hawkins. And it will go out of bounds back over to Kansas. Then the danger of being a perimeter team is you can blow hot and cold when you don't have an inside score to throw it to. That guy can usually get you easy baskets or get fouled. You could, sometimes you go up and down when you rely on that long-range shot. And Villanova, should this game get close, has not played well in close games. Losing a lot of close games this year. They're 9-4. All four losses have been games they just as easily could have won. And now we've got another foul against Villanova. As we will step aside here with the Wachovia Center. A big lead for the Wildcats. Can they hand the Jayhawks their first loss of the season here today? about a team that finds a way to win. Bo Ryan and the Badgers do that. They've got a huge game coming up Tuesday night. ESPN, 9 Eastern in Madison against number one, unbeaten Illinois. Number two, unbeaten Kansas. May not be number two or unbeaten much longer. Down 17 to Villanova right now. This is a huge day of college basketball and a huge week of college basketball. You'll be with Ron Franklin and Norman on Monday night for the Oklahoma State, Oklahoma clash. And a couple of weeks later, you've got the return one in Stillwater, don't you? Both bedroom games. I'm really getting into that. <laughs> Jackson inside, and he is fouled. Look out. Is that Sumter? Steve Welmer will make the call. It is Marcus Austin. Sumter's got three, so they could ill afford to have Sumter picked up his fourth. By the way, so Tuesday, Illinois, Wisconsin, Wednesday, in case you didn't see it on the graphic, 9 Eastern, Maryland, Duke. So basically just order it set up from the tv and your next four days are planned kansas looking at the prospect of a long flight 
back to Lawrence unless they can cut down on the turnovers and start making some shots. And still, Miles, Langford, Giddens, and now Simeon as well. They're all and on the bench. All five stars. That's right. Baugh, a recruited walk-on, number 21, is in there defending Nardi. Hawkins, Lee, Hahn, and Jackson. Ray inside. Tough shot. Boy, that's some good work. That was tough because Jeff Hawkins did not allow him to get into the lane. Troy's still able to get the shot off. 11 now for Ray. A brick by Hawkins. Rebound Villanova. Ray hands it off to Nardi. Now Villanova can't let down right now with five Kansas starters on the bench. They've got to go right at the Jayhawks. Remember, Villanova smarting from a crushing one-point loss at Boston College on Wednesday. They led by six with two minutes to go. Could have beaten one unbeaten team. Now, just a few days later, they've got a chance to beat another unbeaten team. Don't forget tonight, a couple of quality teams. Number 17, Pittsburgh. Number 13, Connecticut. College basketball Saturday tonight at 9 Eastern, right here on ESPN. Coverage begins at 8 Eastern with college game day fueled by Mountain Dew. And right on site, it's Reese Davis, Jay Billis, and Digger Phelps from Gamble Pavilion in stores. Duke, Florida State at 6. Basically, your day and night is set up on ESPN. And if you're on the East Coast in this snowstorm, what yep. better place to be? Yeah, Fran and I, we don't think we're getting anywhere <laughs> after the game except back to the hotel and in front of the two. You get some room service. <laughs> they talk about room service point guard. Maybe Aaron Miles will bring us some room service. He's the kind of guy who's been delivering his entire career. But what, take us into Bill Self's mind right now as a coach. You're not out of this game. And yeah. You've got a lot of time left, and now here they come. Well, I want to ask you about it. Tell us what Bill Self has been well, doing. Well, it's interesting. The last possession defensively, three Jayhawks dove on the floor for a loose ball. And I guarantee you that the five starters sitting on the bench caught that message. Now it'll be interesting to see how they react. Well, if they don't stop Alan Ray, it doesn't matter who he's got. They could get Danny Manning some eligibility back, and it wouldn't matter. 14 for Alan Ray. All five starters are getting set to check back in for Kansas, but the deficit has ballooned to 21. Well, they go to Baylor on Tuesday night, and I think right now, Bill Self would like to see some increased effort. Bill Self, like many coaches, all the good ones, demand, if nothing else, demands effort and energy. Said he felt he had to beg his team to work hard Wednesday against Nebraska, and he hasn't got much of a better effort here today. Well, you see those, there's three seniors over there that are 101 and 21. They know how to win, but they're getting a good lesson right now as they return to this 21-point deficit. It's hard to believe with 30 seconds left in the first half, this was a four-point game, and Kansas had all the momentum. Well, Dan, you called it at halftime when you talked about Michael Nardi's big three, which gave Villanova a little bit of momentum going into the locker room after losing that 10-point lead. And they came out on fire in the second half, forced Bill Self to call an early timeout of the first minute, and then gradually he just started emptying the bench, couldn't find anybody he was happy with. Well, coaches tell their teams the two most important parts of the game are the first four minutes of the first half and the first four minutes of the second half. That's where you get a chance to set the tempo, not just in terms of the speed of the game, but also in terms of your aggressiveness. If you look at this as a prize fight, Villanova in about the eighth round, the start of the second half, got the knockout blow in. Bill Self up patting all of these subs on the bench as they come off, realizing that in terms of raw ability, they were outmanned right there, but at least he got the effort that he's now going to demand from his starters. Ray continues to pile up the points as he knocks down all three. Ray with 17, 10 of them here in the second half. Well, you get the feeling all the adversity that Villanova has been through, it's like equity in a bank account, and they're making withdrawals today. Another Kansas turnover, the first possession since the starters come back into the game for the Jayhawks. And now some patience here by Villanova. With this kind of a lead, already the clock is your friend. Well, the dilemma is, as you mentioned earlier, they love to play fast like that, and why not? He's unconscious today. What a display of three-point shooting by the Wildcats this afternoon. 
Moody loses it. Another turnover. When is the last time you saw a Kansas team get it handed to them like they're getting it handed to them here today? Well, I think Bill Self now is going back to the bench. And he may just load up the bus and try to get home. Schechter for three. A 30-point lead for Villanova. This starts because of the attitude of the coach, the coaching staff, and the players in practice. Despite the heartbreaking losses that Villanova has suffered recently, they had a very strong attitude that they could come out today, Dan, and play this well. And I was taken back yesterday by the way they handled yep. the last three three days after the Boston College they, loss. They have met all the challenges, and more than anything, for the moment this game began, they just looked like they wanted it more. They've been pumped up. They've been shooting the ball. They've been diving on the floor, getting the rebounds. This has been a remarkable performance by a team that looks like it's going to be going to have to be reckoned with in a very talented Big East. Well, a win here would put them at 10 and four. Certainly heading towards some sort of postseason play but you're also seeing the, ma the maturation process of these four juniors as well remarkable three-point shooting Sumner's got 23 points Ray's got 20 they're the two high scores it was 38 34 in the last minute of the first half since then Villanova's outscored Kansas 32 to 6 Villanova's problems come and finishing off close games doesn't look like that's going to be an issue here today. <laughs> well, remember, they, they took apart a West Virginia team just a couple weeks ago by almost 40 points. That's West right. Virginia was ranked at the time. You take Boston College undefeated to the wire at BC. Without You're, Jason Frazier. Without Jason Frazier. This is a pretty good basketball team. We've seen it today. What makes them so tough to guard is when you scout these guys, there's no plays to really to, to try to scout and take away. It's all done on really good instinctive one-on-one -on -one ability. Get it to Moody back on the bench right now for Kansas. The other three starters still in the game. Russell Robinson has checked in along with Darnell Jackson. Robinson blocked by Charles. Nardi's got it. Numbers for Villanova. Boy is bumped by Langford. No basket. No basket foul before the shot. Well, he's got to be in the act of shooting, and even though Steve Romer called the foul on the ground, that was pretty acrobatic by Randy Boy. You know, he can save this for the NBA, because on the contact and the foul, he's able to have the presence of mind to kiss it off the glass. Randy Foy, Mike Nardi, Alan Ray, Curtis Sumter, Will Sheridan, everybody has done their part, and then some for Villanova. It's almost as if all the anger, all the disappointment, all the frustration of the close losses and the injuries, it's all boiled over, and now Villanova saying, sorry, Kansas, we're taking it all out on you. Well, they've got a coach that stays on an even keel. You can tell a lot about a team by the way they are quoted in the paper, and this team, throughout the adversity, has really kept its head about them. Boy, he is fouled again. He is one of the tougher guys in America to keep out of the lane when he decides he's going to the rim. A 30-point lead for Villanova against Kansas, who are on their way to suffering their first loss of the season here today. Back to the studio for an update now with Scott Reese. And we look ahead to our next game on. Well, as the snow continues to accumulate here in the Northeast, the lead continues to accumulate for Villanova. Assistant coach Ed Pinkney, part of that 1985 NCAA championship team. Many people call it the perfect game. The Wildcats 20 years ago, this is the 20th anniversary of that season, shot 22 out of 28, only missed one shot in the second half. A flawless second half, just about. Ed Pinkney strong inside. Rolly Massimino with the Wildcats, pulling off the upset to beating Georgetown at 66-64 to win the national championship. They had a reunion against Georgetown just uh, a couple of weeks ago, and Georgetown won by the identical score, 66-64. But Ed Pinkney here is an assistant for Villanova, part of their great tradition. Danny Manning on the other bench for Kansas, part of their great tradition, the 1988 national champs. Right now, Ed Pinkney's having a little bit more fun 
you can see kind of a glum expression <laughs> on the face of Danny Manning. Well, you mentioned only missing one shot in the second half of that championship game. It's because they only took 10. They were <laughs> 9 out of right. 10. There was no shot clock back then. Rowing Massimino milked that clock like a dairy farmer. <laughs> <laughs> a 32-point lead for Villanova. A 34-6 run going back to the last minute of the first half. Miles goes around Charles and draws the foul. The worst loss that we can find in the long story tradition of Kansas basketball. Kansas basketball goes as far back as anybody's basketball. It's over 100 years ago, and it's a 40-point loss. This is a great coach and a great team that is a national championship contender. But quite frankly, they've been embarrassed here in the second half by Villanova. Well, Dan, if you look at it, this was coming. You know, the close wins yep. in the last six games, five. The last six wins, five of those games were won by six points or less. They beat Nebraska at home by two the other night. They almost lost it. Corey Sims knocks down the three. This was coming. It might be the best time for it to happen for Kansas. A carry called on Mike Nardi. So let me ask you something. Is Scott Drew down at Waco getting ready to have Baylor host Kansas Tuesday? Is Scott Drew saying, oh, man, what? Why did they have to get blown out just before they come play us? Because now they're really going to be in a bad mood. Well, he is, but I'll tell you, Scott Drew has done a heck of a job yes, down there. They have some good young players. Aaron Bruce, Tim Bush, both he and Billy Gillespie down in the Central Texas have done a nice job. Great hands by Charles, but a loose ball bounces to Simeon. Miles from the wing for the jumper. And the Kansas players on the bench give them a little credit. They're still standing and applauding the baskets, even though the outcome may be a doubt. Bill Self will, will find a way. We forget because they had a great finish. They had a little trouble November, December adjusting to him. Lost yes, the game. Should have won yep. But this is one of the premier coaches in America, and he'll get him sorted out. Well, Dan, we, we saw them get thrown out in January at Nebraska. A similar situation to this. Yep. And that's when they rallied. The worst loss under Bill Self was a 20-point loss. Uh, February of last year, the game that I did in Stillwater against to a very, very good Oklahoma State team that went on to compete in the Final Four. See, the one dilemma, uh, you know, I really thought the injury to Wayne Simeon was a blessing in disguise because Bill Self had not trusted the freshman in the early part of the year. But what the in injury did, it gave other people a chance to step up, but now they have too many guys in the rotation. There's not a fifth guy that you can really count on as a starter closest being Christian Moody and you don't know what you're going to get off your bench from night to night right. and that's where the dilemma is now they've got too many bodies trying to fit into that rotation Alan Ray's had a monster second half 15 points in the second half for Ray 22 in the game another well-kept secret outside the Northeast sixth in the Big East in scoring fourth in three-point percentage second in free throw percentage this guy's a terrific player well, he played in a great high school program in, in the Bronx St. Raymond's he played with Julius Hodge of NC State St. Raymond's one of the top high school programs in the country Simeon to Darnell Jackson, now Jay Wright wants a timeout. Hey, a full day of college basketball continues with two more games here this afternoon on ESPN. Coming up right after us, another Philadelphia team. It'll be Temple taking on Atlantic 10 rival Xavier, then at 4 Eastern, Tennessee at Louisville. Don't forget, at 6 Eastern, undefeated Duke at Florida State. College game day at 8, and then at 9 o'clock tonight, a big game, Pittsburgh and Connecticut in stores. Uh, you want to handicap the big five a little bit for us? <laughs> I've been, I've been talking all day to all these Philly people. I'm so excited to come here on February 7th and do Villanova St. Joe's on ESPN2 on a Monday night. And in the palestra. In the palestra where I've never been. Everybody tells me this Big Five stuff is just, it's absolutely uh, as exciting and as competitive as anything in the country. Well, I think the Big East and the Atlantic 10 take a back seat, at least to the fans, in the city of brotherly love to the Big Five. A great story, tradition. Going back years and years. Plus, we're one of the oldest buildings in the country, Dan. I can't wait. Out of bounds, it'll stay with the Villanova. 6.15 to go, a 27-point lead for Villanova. Kansas earlier this year played St. Joe's, sticking with the Big Five team, another Philly team. They beat St. Joe's by 40. Now they're losing to Villanova by 27. St. Joe's has gotten better since then, though. 
Nardi. Whoops, bad idea right there. Stolen by Robinson. Hey! Miles for three. Oh! And Foy just elevates right over the top of Simeon for the rebound. If your chance is down, you have to shoot it quick. Miles shooting that ball before the teammates would be in rebounding position. Way back and down, Robinson spins and hits two more. He's unstoppable right now. That's called a schoolyard move right there. That's Bronx basketball. Wow. I don't know where Robinson was thinking that was going. It was five feet over the head of Simeon. Now Ray wide open again. These three guards are murder. 27 points for Allen Ray, 20 of them here in the second half. Langford with an air ball, sitting in there to pick up the loose change and drop a six-footer. But the Villanova fans are having fun at the Jayhawks' expense right now. Now, Bill Self wanted to use this time with his starters to get back into a rhythm before they go to Baylor. He might just be better off emptying his bench and just get, getting back on the plane. Jackson, good hustle for Kansas. As the Jayhawks come up with the ball, Allen Ray comes up out of that scrum a little bit shaken up. Langford with a three. Allen Ray may have gotten poked in the eye. He appears to be okay and will stay in the game. You get the feeling the way he's played today, it wouldn't affect his shooting. No. Anyway. <laughs> just close the eye that, that got poked. He has had some kind of a day. Ties a season high with 27 points. Averages 16 and a half. Simeon knocks it away. And then out of bounds on Simeon. Villanova basketball, 4.15 to go. A monster second half for Allen Ray. And a 30-second timeout called by Villanova. talked a lot about Ray and Foy. One guy I know, Fran, that you're really fond of. Let's tell the story of Mike Nardi, another Villanova player. Doesn't get a lot of attention outside the Northeast. Well, he was a great high school player in New Jersey. Played for St. Patrick's High School, won a state title, but I call him the professor because he reminds me of the, the guy on street ball. And we put a little package together right here. <laughs> I don't know if you can do this in the Big East, but certainly this is the game you learned on the schoolyard. And this is the way they play, really. Jake Wright gives them a lot of freedom in the offense. They're hard to guard. You can't scout plays. All three guards have the ability to shoot the ball from outside and also knock down and be able to get into the lane as well. Nardi's only turned it over once today in 30 minutes of action. Look out, Sucker got grabbed from behind. Battling for that rebound, Randy Foy off to Sucker, who will shoot two. But again, this unbelievable hustle and effort and energy, it has been on display from the moment this game began for the Wildcats. Well, we talked about it starting in practice yesterday, and you see the effort. Watch Randy Foy now as he hits the ground, makes the dish, and Sumter gets fouled. But when you have a team that's gone through the adversity Villanova has, then the team can go up or it can go down. Yeah. And a lot of it depends on the leadership of the coach. Well, they went down last year after the, the phone card scandal. We talked about the suspensions. They were shorthanded for basically the first half of the season. Had to win a couple of games in the Big East tournament just to get to the NIT. Now this year, injuries. The, uh, the terrifying incident they had on the plane trying to get out of Providence where they had to come back and make an emergency landing. And the coaches and players thought that their lives were in danger. And, you know, that, those sentiments were kind of echoed by the staff when they got back to the ground about how much trouble that plane was in before the pilot got it back to the ground in Providence. Now they have a player kicked out of today's game, Kyle Lowry, for throwing a punch. He'll miss the Notre Dame game. But the core of this team, they're all juniors right now. Nardi's a sophomore, but all the other guys are juniors. It, it's kind of that fork in the road moment for this program. Well, they, they, they handle the adversity. It's either going to make you better or make you worse. And it has made them better. Great performance today. All right, Scott, well, it's, it's, it's actually a Wake Forest game. The last time we could find a Kansas loss by this big of a margin, or even bigger, they lost by 31 to Wake Forest in December of 2000. 
losing by 27 here to the Wachovia Center to Villanova today. So after this game, we're going to be left with three unbeatens. Illinois' next game will be at Wisconsin Tuesday night, 9 Eastern, right here on ESPN. Duke's next game at Florida State tonight, 6 Eastern here on ESPN. And BC is at St. John's this evening as well. Well, Florida State, since Leonard Hamilton has been there, has always been a tough place for ACC foes. Another turnover. One of the many problems the Jayhawks have had. Nardi trying to go a little Nardi professor on you right there, huh? He might have seen that package you built. Uh, he, it's showtime now. Uh, if you're Jay Wright right now, you just don't want anybody getting hurt. Well, that's true. But they don't really have a whole lot of depth to go to with this big of a lead. Nardi gets the bounce. Nardi and Foy are still in the game. Ray has come out. Michael Lee from the wing. By the way, Stephen Vincent, number 20, has made just his second appearance of the season now for the Jayhawks. Bill Self has literally emptied his bench. A stunning game here in Philly. Number two, Kansas, coming in at 14-0, will not be unbeaten after this one is done. Dan Schulman, Fran, for Schiller with you. Kansas will drop to 14-1, leaving just three unbeatens, including Duke, who you can see tonight, 6 Eastern at Florida State here on ESPN. It was a four-point lead for Villanova with 30 seconds left in the first half. It has been a mess since then for Kansas, almost as big a mess as the weather outside. Well, as a coach, you want to teach lessons when you're winning, but Kansas has been winning lately, and they have not been particularly sharp, so it's possible the only way to get through to this team, if you're Bill Self, when you've talked about the effort necessary to be a top team is a loss like this. Baker Dunleavy now into the game for Villanova. Does not play very often. Sumter will go out. Baker, of course, the younger brother of Mike Dunleavy. Sumter getting a huge ovation as he comes out. 25 points on the afternoon for Sumter. You talked about it early. You were bang on it. Kansas did not have somebody who matched up well with him, a big guy who could guard him out of the perimeter. Well, as long as Villanova didn't get hurt on the defensive boards, it really plays in their favor. It, and it's always easier to match up. When you have a matchup advantage, it's always easier to match up small because smaller guys are more skilled and are able to do more things. We saw that today with something at the power forward spot. Brad, how about these shooting numbers for something? Five for six from three-point range and eight for eight from the foul line. Well, well, nearly a steal. Now, the crowd, predictably, is going to spend the next two minutes trying to coach Baker Dunleavy into taking a shot. Nardi is stripped. And back comes Hawkins for the Jayhawks. Dunleavy's got it for the Wildcats. Listen to the crowd now. That's the only element of drama that remains. Will Baker Dunleavy hoist a shot? Well, I know I'm getting old because I saw Baker's dad play in high school. <laughs> Nazareth High School in Brooklyn, New York. South Carolina graduate. Nardi misses the three. Rebound, Vincent. You know, sometimes you get ready to do a game, you say, oh, I don't have to worry about him, he won't play. <laughs> well, they've all played here today, just about. Galindo misses a shot. Con underneath. About the only positive that comes out of this game for Kansas, Sasha Khan is getting better by the game. No, you're right. Coming off 18 minutes against Colorado, Nebraska. Big game at Kentucky. Here come the Villanova walk-ons now. Ross Condon and Tom Grace will check in and listen to the ovation for Nardi and Paul. And they woke up this morning. Do you think they thought they might play today? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they thought if they did, it would be because their team was losing by a big margin. But a Villanova, I guess you call it an upset. One team's ranked second and undefeated, and the other team came in having lost two in a row. But a Villanova was ready to play for the moment this game began. Here's Condon from 17. Sheridan comes down with a rebound. Grace, Condon, and Dunleavy on the perimeter right now for the Wildcats. They're trying to run some offense. All the crowd wants them to do is shoot a three. Still about 20 on the shot clock. Kansas will drop from the ranks of the unbeaten, leaving three. Illinois, Duke, and Boston College. Dunleavy with eight on the shot clock on the drive. Steps on Baker's unruly. A 
terrific performance, especially by Alan Ray with 27, Curtis Sumter with 25, Villanova blew out Kansas here in the second half, outscoring them 42 to 25 since the break. At one point, it was a 34 to 6 run for the Wildcats. Bob can't get the shot off. 15 of the game. Shot clock turned off. Hawkins for three. And now the crowd standing and applauding. A terrific performance by Villanova here today. They'll go to 10 and 4. Kansas will drop to 14 and 1. And that's it. Kansas no longer unbeaten. What a win for this Villanova program as the students storm the floor. Villanova pushes Kansas here today, 83 to 62, the most lopsided defeat by a Kansas team in more than four years. And then there were three: Illinois, Duke, and BC. Duke tonight, six Eastern here on ESPN against Florida State. Illinois Tuesday night, nine Eastern at Wisconsin. Here on ESPN, Boston College is at St. John's tonight. Kansas had won so many close games. Villanova had lost so many close games. Villanova made sure this wasn't going to be a close game here today. Routing Kansas by 21 points. Fran Fraschilla, my partner, has ventured onto the court, risking his own personal safety to try to get Jay Wright. We're going to try to get Jay Wright for a live interview here today to talk to the coach of Villanova about how he's got to feel about his team, which has faced a lot of adversity the last couple of years, and what this kind of a win means for the Wildcat program. They step out of conference here on a snowy Saturday in Philadelphia, and they come up huge, drubbing Kansas by 21 points to knock the Jayhawks from the ranks of the unbeaten here this afternoon. Villanova will step back into conference and play Notre Dame. Wednesday night right here at the Wachovia Center. That won't be easy, especially considering Kyle Lowry, their talented freshman to guard, first man off the bench in the backcourt, will not play in that game after getting suspended. Threw a punch here today, got ejected from today's game, and with that comes a one-game suspension, so he won't play on Wednesday night. But that is far from the minds of the Villanova fans right now. They are still in a huge group, as you can see, out of the floor. And somewhere in the middle of that group, I'm told, is Jay Wright, the victorious head coach, who is now trying to make his way over to Fran Fraschilla for a post-game interview. Temple and Xavier still to come. Tennessee, Louisville here on ESPN. Duke, Florida State. And tonight, of course, Pittsburgh and Connecticut. But right now, the Wildcat and all the students having a great time here in a huge snowstorm in the Northeast as they beat Kansas 83-62. to Temple and Xavier coming up. Bob Carpenter is in Cincinnati. Bob, let's send it to you. The number two team in the country is undefeated no longer. Kansas loses by 21 in Philadelphia. Dan